Allow me to tell you a brief story. In the heat of the 2022 presidential campaigns, this source came to me with information that I immediately rubbished. They told me that contrary to what I was saying on the channel, the presidential candidate William Samuel Ruto would win the upcoming general election yeah, by a slim margin. 100,000 votes, 200,000 votes, something like that. Why did I rubbish them immediately? Because I had the data. I was following the elections very closely. I have the experience of following elections. I started monitoring and following elections closely in the year 1992. I looked at the data in front of me. I talked to a few sources to confirm. And one of them asked me, Chris, what are you smoking? Raila is winning this thing by a landslide. And then a little while later, the very same source came back to me. And they told me, that after the elections, there will be a dispute and it will go to the Supreme Court and presidential candidate William Samuel Ruto would win that case. His victory would be upheld by the highest court in the land. Now I started to get suspicious. It is one thing predicting an election result and it is quite another to predict the verdict of a court before even the case arrives at that court. Well, you know how this story ends. With egg on the face of Kumekucha Chris, this source I dismissed ended up being 1000% correct. It happened exactly how they said it would happen. And here, is a major piece of evidence to tell you that something must have been stage managed. Rigged, stage managed, that is what happened. We did not have an election in 2022. No, at least we didn't have a presidential election. What we had was a stage managed selection. Well, the same source has come back to me. And you can be sure this time round, I am paying attention. <laughs> Wouldn't you? And guess what this source told me? They told me, the server is going to be opened. I said, okay, that's not breaking news. We're all expecting the servers to be opened. The NADCO report, that was one of the issues agreed on by both sides. That there would be an audit of the 2022 presidential elections. And then they added something else. They said that what will be found in the server is that William Samuel Ruto actually won the elections. That Chebukati did not make a mistake in announcing him the winner. That actually had more votes, that's what will be found in the server, than Ray Laudinga. Now, hey, now, now, now. To be honest, that was a bombshell to me. Okay? But while I was still trying to figure it out, while I was still trying to digest this information, an old friend suddenly emerged on our weekly intelligence briefings forum and started a conversation. And the way he started this conversation is by repeating the information that I had already been given. And I believe some of you listening in to this video today were there when this was unfolding last night. And this old friend of mine yeah, made a prediction. He said that when the servers are opened, it will be found that Ruto won fair and square. Yeah, to quote him verbatim. Now, over the years, 
I've tried very hard to stick to a rule yeah, when the information is controversial. A rule of having at least two independent sources on a piece of information. Sources that are either credible or at least have a track record of giving me information that usually pans out, turns out to be correct. And so in this instance, I had my two sources. And so here I am to tell you that there's a high possibility that when the servers are opened, what will be found is not what Kenyans expect to be found. Yeah, that is a real win. Because we were there. We voted. We asked our friends how they voted. We know how Kenyans voted. That is not what is going to be found on the servers. What is going to be found on the servers, there's a high probability, will be a Ruto win. Ah, yeah, 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 Now, I just need to ask and answer a very simple question. What impact will this have, if any? How will Kenyans react when this unfolds, when and if this unfolds? Now, you know on this channel I keep on talking about human nature. And many people completely ignore that. Many of us choose to analyze politics based on our feelings and based on the side of the political divide we are supporting. Period. We do not allow our thinking to go beyond that. And of course that is a mistake. There is no way you can separate human nature and political analysis. How? Because at the end of the day, the reaction of the people is very important. It is so important that even if you are powerful, you need to pay attention. Let me give you a quick example. Those who assassinated Julius Caesar went to his funeral yeah, and were very nervous about allowing a very close friend of the late Caesar, a man called Mark Antony, to address the people. But somehow Mark Antony convinced them yeah, that he was not going to say anything against them. Yeah. And he started, well, I have come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do live long after they are gone. But the good they do is too quickly forgotten. Because it is often interred with their bones. It ends when you bury them. People forget the good they did. But the evil they did will live for a very long time. That's how it started. Very innocently. But just like the typical politician, Mark Antony did not keep the promise of what he said as he opened his speech. Because he went on to read Caesar's will which gifted the people. He went on to show the people Caesar's body with the many, many stab wounds. And human nature kicked in. The people were very angry. And tables were turned instantly. The people who had come to that funeral very powerful and in control had to flee, run for their lives. Has human nature changed since the days of Julius Caesar? Of course not. And what I'm about to say, most of us will strongly disagree. Okay, which is okay. You're allowed to have your own opinion. However, I firmly believe, based on human nature, that what I'm about to say is a very high likelihood. Finding different results in the server can only mean one thing, that they have been changed 
they've been altered. Now many computer geeks and experts will tell you that that is impossible. Yeah, others will tell you even if you make changes it will be possible to trace those changes that have been made. However, you will need to agree with me that in this day and age we live in, there are so many cutting-edge technologies that are not in the public domain. Okay? And the list is very long. And I'm afraid, for a very good reason, I have to leave it there. Because in the year 2020, I suffered a lot for my ignorance. Failing to know that when you hear forum have certain rules that you cannot break if you want to remain on this forum. And if you believe me and then add the information in my very latest highly sensitive special report yeah, that is Moto Kuliko Pasimia Moja Yamaka you will understand totally how it may be possible that these results in the server are not what Kenyans expect. Even with all your computer expertise. No offense intended. Anyway, this is what I have to say that I know many will not agree. It would have been much better for the real results to have been left intact on that server. Why? Because people would have had those results and psychologically they would have relaxed. Okay? And of course when people relax it is easy to manipulate them. It is easy to sell the narrative, whatever has been found on the server cannot be implemented until after 2027 general elections. But when the people sense that they've been fooled, when the people sense that something has gone wrong, somebody has adjusted and altered things, they will react with anger very emotional anger. The same emotional anger yeah, that Mark Antony's speech at Caesar's funeral caused. Bottom line, altering the results in the server could have the exact opposite reaction. Those who have done it are expecting. Because I think what they're expecting is people say, okay, Kumbi were wrong. Oh, Ruto actually won. Okay. And Rayla lost. Okay. So as me have been lying to us. The whistleblowers telling lies. Okay. These people are right. The government of William Samuel Ruto is legitimate. That is the reaction they're expecting. But even as I say it, doesn't it sound ridiculous? <laughs> doesn't it? Does it sound right to you that that is how people are going to react? Of course not. Now, many of us I'm sure know this. In the intelligence community, there's something called plausible deniability. What it means is that you carry out a covert operation and you do something and people suspect it is you you're the one with the motive etc etc but then you deny very strongly and by denying what you're saying is plausible people suspect you but they have zero evidence and therefore they're forced by circumstances to do nothing because they can prove nothing. Throughout history, this has been used in assassinating key political figures. Yeah. 
The people know in their knowing that it must have been the government that carried out this hit. But they have no evidence. They have zero evidence. Bottom line, the idea is not to prove your innocence. The idea is to prove that it is possible you are innocent. <laughs> Super fascinating. And maybe somebody has applied this to this altering of the real elections in the service. And maybe that's how they're thinking. But I'm afraid the circumstances in this particular case <laughs> are a little different. I don't think I need to remind you of the emotional pain Kenyans felt after the 2022 presidential election results were announced by Wafula Chebukati. People kept off mainstream media. They kept off their televisions. Indeed, it caused a major crisis with our media houses, with our big media houses. Because media houses need an audience so that the advertisers who pay them a lot of money can reach that audience. And so when a media house is not reaching an audience or is reaching an audience that is close to zero, the advertisers vanish overnight. And that media house is suddenly in deep financial problems. To date, there are some people who have never gone back to mainstream media. Okay? And there are others, their consumption of the news has changed completely. Since the year 2022, yeah, August, they go to YouTube and watch a few relevant videos. They are on TikTok on Twitter. But they will never do what they used to do before. Sit down and watch TV news. You will end up for very many people. A significant number of people. Now, those are raw emotions. Okay? And now you throw in your theories of plausible deniability. You throw in your theories of if you fix the server results to reflect what you want, that all will be well. <laughs> really? Are you sure it will work out the way you want or the way you expect? In my opinion, in my very humble opinion, no offense intended, I don't think so. But you see, actually, all this makes sense. Okay? There is a very interesting link to the BBI. There is a very interesting link to Amos Wako and the time he was banned from entering a certain country in the West. And there's also a link to a very recent appointment of the Council General in Los Angeles, a Mr. Ezra Chiloba, or Chilobai, as his fans like to call him. There is a link. There are links there. And all this is discussed in my very latest highly sensitive report. <laughs> which will open your eyes to see things the way you have never seen them before. Yeah. You will realize that reading the daily news, following developments without this information, is just a waste of time because everything is predictable. Believe it or not, stopping reggae was just a dress rehearsal or shall I call it a dry run, to what happened in 2022. Okay? Now, it took me a lot of time and effort to put all this information together. And when you take in this sensitive report, you will be able to understand exactly what I'm talking about. Because it all starts with the time during the presidency of Kibaki, when I received 
information that the then Minister for Agriculture, Abuana Ruto, was about to face a travel ban. But then what ended up happening was extremely puzzling. Because unknown to most Kenyans, the person who was banned from traveling to the United States was already in the United States, was already living there, was already operating a company there. <laughs> what? Wonders never cease. Everything suggested that names had been switched. And so you have to ask yourself, why? Okay? All the answers become very clear when you look at everything in retrospect. Backwards, starting from right now in Kenya, the year 2024, you just look at everything backwards, everything fits in like a glove. My special report, Unimaginable Secrets of the Server, is available for only $30 or Kenya shillings 3999 And I am targeting only 10 people because of the highly sensitive nature of this information. You know, in the past, yours truly has received threats. That is very normal at the level we operate on this channel. Yeah, the information you get many times is not the information that is widely available. So please understand me and please bear with me. Ten people, first come, first served. I believe you can see details on your screens right now. Please take action quickly to avoid disappointment. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.